Good day and welcome to another edition of the Rev Up, brought to you by Crowcast. My name is Rob, and this is my able-bodied son, Cameron. How are you going, Cameron? Good man. You? Happy birthday for tomorrow too, mate. Thanks, mate. Just <laughs> mortality rages just, on, doesn't just it? Just a lazy two five. Yes. <laughs> Getting old. <laughs> We're here, of course, to uh, rev you up for the big game this afternoon against Fremantle, starting at uh, ten past four this afternoon, Adelaide time, at Adelaide Oval. Correct. And uh, it's going to be a big match. And yeah. uh, before we get onto that, let's just uh, quickly talk about last week. Yeah, let's. Think. Yeah, let's. <laughs> let's talk about last week. Let's talk about last week. Mm, mm. What happened? What happened? Uh, yeah, we got up pretty Did well. We? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Did you burn your St. Kilda Guernsey at, Guernsey at the end of the game? <laughs> <laughs> I seem to remember the promise of beer and where is it? Yeah, I know. We're a bit short today. <laughs> I can't see it anywhere. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I, I'll bring it tomorrow to the barbecue. Yeah, all right. No worries. <laughs> uh, but it was a good win. It was. It was a good win. We um, were challenged early, as I predicted. Yeah, I'll give you that. We were um, a little bit sluggish out of the blocks, but I mm. thought we wrestled control back pretty well, and then we sort of got on top. And to be honest, I think they let us off a little bit with their goal kicking, yeah, and we early. put ourselves in a good position by kicking straight. Yeah. Um, and that sort of, I think, went a long way into making a bit of a difference, yeah. but I still think eventually we would have run over the top of them. Yeah, it made it easier that we were yeah. accurate and they were yep. missing a few, although, you know, we did have a couple of misses, like Elliot uh, missed a couple yeah, and, yeah. and that. But look, <clears throat> you know, it was a pretty good performance and uh, it was interesting that uh, the change of momentum in the first quarter seemed to coincide with not only the first rotation when uh, Greenwood and Ellis Yeoman went in, yeah. but also Dom coming down onto the bench again Yeah, to give so a lot, message. There's a lot that's been said about that during the week as well. I wonder, and the players have sort of given feedback that it's good because he gets, you know, that the message gets delivered right there and there's yeah. no if, muts or, if buts or maybe about it. So, um, but yeah, I like him coming down on the bench. It's yeah, good. no, it is really good. And, um, you know, I think the, the the downside of not having a runner, obviously, is that it's a bit harder to change things up during the course of a, yeah. a game. Yep. But it seems that more and more teams are adopting this coaching from the yeah, bench yeah. Uh, thing. Gone and, old school. Well, it is very yeah. old school. Gone old school. Um, you know, and I guess it's <clears throat> not unlike uh, the NFL in many ways because... Yeah. The, the head coach in the NFL will be down on the sideline, yep. but he'll have his analysts up, yeah, up in the box. Yeah, and he's on the headset, and, yeah. So um, it's, you know, obviously the way of the future. and I, yep. I think it's really good. So, you know, we got up against the Saints. We get to three and three. So really yep. you could say that the season's back on track. Uh, it's a back to a, a salvageable spot, yeah. I mean, we still got a bit a bit of work to do from here, obviously. Yep. But, yeah, we're definitely um, we're not staring down the barrel of no finals, that's for sure, which is good. Yeah, and look, you know, early season form is always interesting. We've had loads of upsets and strange yeah. ladder positions yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yep. And it seems to, after about six or seven rounds, it starts to work itself out. Yep. And, um, you know, so as long as you're sort of around the pack... Um, and certainly the buy is like the benchmark now. If you're yeah. around the pack, uh, and, and the buy. Let's not get too carried away either. It's a bit of a log jam between mm. you know third and all the way down to twelfth. So you know there's a few teams in there that are all in the same boat around that three and three sort of mark. Um, and then it's really only Geelong that's sitting pretty on top. Uh, yeah. All right. Well. Uh, Frio is going to be a challenge because they've started the season really well. Yeah, surprisingly. And they've been one of the surprises that have come out um, of the year as well with a few upsets, or what we thought of upsets. But, you know, knocked off the Giants a couple of weeks ago. They're looking pretty good. And they've changed the way they've played a little bit. That Ross has finally um, given in and actually started to play some attacking footy. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's have a look at the lineup, shall we? No worries. Start with Fremantle. All right, so at full back line, back pocket, we've got Joel Hamling. Full back, Alex Pierce. The other back pocket, Luke Ryan. Half back, we've got Reese Conker. Centre half back, Nathan Wilson. And then the other half back flank is Ethan Hughes. Centre line, we've got Ed Langdon on the wing. And then Fife in the centre. And then the other side, we've got Bradley Hill. Half forward, we've got Michael Walters. Centre half forward is Andrew Brayshaw, funnily enough. Yeah. Uh, and then the other half forward flank is Travis Collier. Uh, and then the full forward line, we've got Jesse Hogan, Tabernar. And then the other pocket is Brandon Matera. Your followers are Rory Lobb. Uh, Darcy Tucker and David Mundy on the interchange Ryan can't say that name Newhouse Nyehouse Nyehouse there we go thank you <laughs> Sam Switzkowski he should be able to say that Switzkowski I don't know <laughs> and then uh, Chera and Cam McCarthy uh, no change for the Dockers yeah going in no change mm. and that forward line looks alright now they're scoring oh, yeah. a few goals <clears throat> well and we'll get on to this but Tabernar and Hogan are proving to be pretty 
um, damaging. And then you've also got the likes of Walters and Collier and that, that step well, up and Matera as and well. And McCarthy coming off yeah. the bench as well. Yeah. Can take yeah. Her. yeah, look, let's look at the Crows lineup. And there's only one change with uh, Gibbsy coming in and uh, poor old Miles. Oh, can't catch a break. Poor old Miles uh, just on the peripheral at Didn't the think he was that bad. Oh, well, he's just not being played in position. He's playing stop gap and. But it's not to... like he's you know having clangers and no. having shockers. He's just you know, playing. Yeah. yeah, he's just he's just not you know. Anyway, yeah. look from the back line we've got <coughs> Keithy, Daniel Talia and Kyle Hardigan. Cross half back we've got Brody Smith. We've got Lady Holden down that centre half back spot again. Taking the monster. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Dave McKay uh, across the middle. Riley Knight. Matty Crouch and Rory Atkins, uh, half forward. Hugh Greenwood starting. Like that. Uh, Tommy Lynch and Lockie Murphy. Let's hope he plays with the same energy again. Yep. And uh, full forward, we've got the Big Easy <laughs> and the Tex and the Bets. Mm. Tex and the Bets. Uh, Tex and the Bets, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, in, the, in the first ruck, we've got Riley O'Brien uh, really showing some improvement every game uh, so far, proving me wrong. I'm still not sold, but you're right. He has been making an upward trajectory. Second efforts. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Sloney and Bradley Crouch. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the bench, we've got Gibbsy, the Gooch. Uh, Well-deserved, I mm. think, uh, even though probably at the expense of Pahulki in the end. but Probably a better better player to have in with the lineup. I think. Just a bit of pace. Bit of pace, yeah. yeah. And doesn't lack for any hardness at the, no. at the contest. Uh, Jake Kelly, uh, for mine, little, un- uh, little lucky. Little, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And Cam <clears throat> Ellis Yolman. Mm. So for Fremantle, who, who do you think the keys are for Frio? Yeah, look, and one that always pops up when we play these guys, and it's funny because he goes missing in other games, but when he plays us, he gets up every time, and that's Michael Walters. Yep. When we play Walters, he kicks three or four, yeah. and he normally has 25 touches. So, I know, he comes from nowhere. Oh, well, it, he doesn't come from nowhere. He's a good player, but he, he tends to go missing. But against us, he just seems to dominate. So I think that if Michael Walters gets his 25 touches and three or four goals, that'll be really big for them. And he loves playing against us, so I wouldn't be surprised if he did it. Yeah, I well, think that... We haven't uh, got the dude to chase him down this time. No, either. we don't. <laughs> um, and I think forward line, everyone's talking about Hogan for them, but I, I really think that Tabernar is a very dangerous prospect for them because he can clunk a mark and if he can kick straight, he's a pretty hard one to stop as well. I watched him play against the Giants a couple of weeks ago yeah. and he monstered them. Yeah. And he's playing on a, not a slouch in Phil Davis back there as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and then the other one, of course, Nat Fife. Yeah. If he's winning it at the coalface and you know getting it on the outside and doing his thing, that will go a very long way for them to win as well. Yeah, I agree with those. Yeah. And look... I think for that very reason, I think our key key players this week are more or less in the back line. I think yep. uh, Alex Keith and Daniel Talia and Kyle Hardigan, I'll put as one key player. Because <laughs> Just the full back line? <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's probably the first week where it's a reasonable matchup. And yeah. you can see you can see key matchups for each of those players. Yep. You know, you'd expect probably Talia to start on Hogan, I reckon. Yep. Um, and they probably... Nah, I actually disagree with that. Do you? I reckon Tyler will go to Tappanagh. Hogan's pretty mobile. Yeah. And he plays higher. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Keith or Hardigan will probably play on the higher forward. Yeah. Um, whoever it ends up being, and yep. they'll probably, you know, rubber band a bit. Yep, yep. Um, but all three, three of those. Um, and it's going to be interesting because Keith has been our intercept player, mm-hmm. and it looks like this week he might actually be held a little bit more accountable. Yeah. Which means he's going to have more of a defensive role, which I hope doesn't impact too much on our distribution out of defence and our ability to yep. intercept uh, in that back 50 because that's been one of our keys the last couple mm-hmm. of weeks yep. is our ability to bounce off you know, yeah, half create. back. Yep. Yep. Um, and also, I think uh, the, the, other, the other key for us is Tex yep. because he's just hitting a, a vein of form in my mm-hmm. view. Yep, he's looking uh, good. I hate to say it, JJ, but I reckon that the Big Easy has just opened a path for Tex. Uh, I reckon Elliot knows where to run. He knows when to run. Yep. He knows the value of creating space behind him. Yep. And Tex is rubbing his hands together. So, yep. And look, it's an unsung backline for Frio, and I think Tex is one that can get off the chain. Yeah, well, they don't. They're probably what Alex Pierce will go to him, I think. Well, um, you think, yeah. But again, you know, they'll probably do a bit like what we do and play team defence. But it was interesting. I actually heard Ross Lyon uh, in a press conference in midweek 
um, and they're tossing up whether to play someone on him or whether they do their team defence thing. So, yeah, yeah. And that's good because it means that his form has got the opposition coach thinking about yeah. maybe we need to put someone on him on him. Would have, and it'd be a while since Texas form has actually warranted it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a bit harsh. He does good things, but well, I think yeah. he, he he's the moment, hitting the scoreboard. Yeah, and that's the and that's the th- the knock that's always been on him that people oh he doesn't kick enough goals. And it's like well he's yeah. been playing pretty high. Yeah. Um, but back at full forward, he's found his groove yeah. and kicking Playing goals. Playing deep. Again. Yep. <clears throat> hitting up. Yep. Like taking those nice leads with it out front and all the rest. Tell of you what, JJ would want to kick a bag this week because <sighs> otherwise look. he might not get back in <laughs> again. Well, you know, it's not only the output of Himmelberg and mm. let's face it he kicked 2-2 two, two last week yep. um, you know only 8 or 9 posies but just looks like a forward yeah. um, and like I said it's the stuff that he does in terms of creating space yeah. um, and options yep. I feel like the, the midfield are starting to get confidence in him and they kick to him knowing that he's going to make a contest yep. but also I think it's actually allowed Betts and yeah. Murphy to... Bring some small forwards in. Well, it actually gives them more confidence that there's going to be a contest. Yep. So they're more willing, I think, to get front and square. And it's such a flow-on effect because you've gone from someone who doesn't make a contest and the ball just flying out of the full yeah. 50 to yeah. having Elliot in and, yeah, only nine posies and, you know, whatever. It doesn't have a massive impact on the game in terms of disposals. But because he's got such a presence and he does bring the ball to ground, it makes our small forwards either get the crumb kick goal or be able to create that forward pressure so it doesn't come out so easy and therefore we can press better. Well, yeah, and we can get our, fe- yeah. like I said, get, yeah. get our defence set behind yeah. the balls. How do we match up with them overall? Yeah, look, um, I think, I don't really want to talk about uh, like Frio's side, their defence as much because I think that we've got them covered there. But with Frio's forward line, we've got to really have to work hard. They've got so many weapons there. They've got Hogan, Tabernard, Matera, Collier is no sh- uh, slouch, and then Walters. Like, that is a yeah, pretty potent forward it's line. It's a very potent And then you've got Rory Lobb that floats down there when he's resting, and yep. then you've got Cam McCarthy on the bench as well. Yep. Like, that, that is, I, that's a pretty big, like, pretty nasty forward line to come up against. And, it, and it's pretty unusual for a Fremantle side. Yeah, it's... They've sort of, always been a bit like us in that they've lacked that real firepower up <laughs> forward. Yeah, I mean, you they've know, had Pav. They've had Pav. That's about it. Yeah, um, yeah. Whereas now they've got multiple options and Hogan adds that um, another dimension to their forward line because he's quite mobile and Cam McCarthy's a bit like that as well. Um, but then they've still got the clunker in Tabernar yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, so I think that you know the our defence opposed to their forward line is going to be a pretty big deciding factor on how the game's played out in terms of who wins. Yeah. Um, because if our defence gets on top of their forwards and we nullify them through Talia and Hardigan and then Keith gets off the chain um, and then get it to our halfbacks... Brody McKay yeah. um, will will go on a very good good stead to win. So, Don mentioned during the week that he's that he's looking at Fremantle and, and we're looking at how we can shut down uh, their style of play in order to get our fair share of the of the pill. Yep. Do you think we might turn this into a bit of a scrap and actually try to uh, like play fairly deep yeah. in defence and get numbers back because we're going to be very. Uh, Accountable, held very accountable in our defence. Like even yep. Smithers and Dmac have got match a lot. Brandon Materia, Materia, sorry. Yep. Uh, Michael Waters, as we mentioned before. I mean, yep. that everyone has got the ability to hit the scoreboard for Fremantle. Yep. And so it feels like the back six is going to be pretty much occupied with actually trying to keep them from yep. scoring. Yep. Which <clears> means uh, what tends to happen when that when we get to that sort of point is that we get very stagnant. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether we're going to be playing our midfielders very defensively and, and getting behind the ball and trying to move the ball out yeah. um, and play that territory uh, game that, that Don likes so much and concentrate first on getting the ball out of defence and then maybe causing a stoppage and resetting. Yeah. And well, it's funny. I was actually listening to Huey Greenwood on Triple M this morning on the way to the footy um, and he talked about exactly that, winning yeah, right. the territory battle. Yeah. Um, so that... <laughs> That's just uh, it's just my son in the background. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that that's probably what I think they're going to do is play that territory battle. And look, we've still got all of our big bodies in there in Greenwood, Yolman, Crouch, well both the Crouches, um, you know, and then obviously Sloan as well. So I think that that midfield battle and creating that congestion and the stoppage when the ball comes out and then resetting yeah. and then yeah. trapping it in is going to be vital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we're going to be really. Uh, focusing on returning side fifties as well when we do get the yep. ball forward, I yep. think there's going to be a heavy focus on which is what we did last week as well. Exactly, yep. forward fifty pressure, 
getting the, the defensive line set so that we can bounce the ball back in and not allow... But the thing we did against St Kilda is not allow them to get that run yeah, like yeah. they did the previous week against yep. Melbourne. Yep. And uh, it's going to be doubly important against Fremantle, I think, because yeah. if, if they can bounce out of our forward line quickly, they've got a lot of firepower to kick to. So Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot of damaging players down there for sure. So how do you reckon the midfield stacks up? I mean, you know, we've got a very heavy focus on ground ball and mm. clearances and, you know, all those coalface stats. Yeah, well, you do look at those stats for both teams and it's pretty even. They've sort of got us in a few areas. I think they've got us on total clearances, but we're, like, on a couple behind. I think stoppages, we're on top. Yeah. Um, contested ball, they're a little bit on top, but again, it's not much. It's yeah. similar to what it was with St Kilda last week. So yeah. we def- in midfield terms, we definitely play very similarly. Yeah. Um, They've got the big bodies of Fife and then also Mundy in there as well. So, um, yeah, contested ball and ground balls are going to be huge this week. Yeah, look, absolutely. And I think our midfield looks pretty balanced now with Gooch in the team yep. uh, and Gibbsy, obviously. I mean, we've got we've got Sloan and uh, Crouch as, as probably the you know the upper echelon, but then we've got the workhorses. We've got Huey and we've got Cam ellis Yep. We've got Jordan in there for a little bit of pace. Yep. Um you know, Bryce is probably, I think, going to alternate between... I, I reckon we'll actually play Bryce behind the ball. I think he'll be at half-back, sort of like what he was the yeah. two weeks ago against um, but, Gold Coast. Yeah, I wouldn't mind betting that, he, that he'll have a little bit of a run through the midfield at times, but his yeah. role will be very much that extra. And, you know, as we were talking about before, if, if our defenders are tied up, you know, c- containing them, yep. then I think that's going to be Bryce's role, to be that distributor out of, out of the back lines. Yep. Obviously, uh, Brody Smith... Uh, is going to be key yep. in terms of our transition. Every um, week <laughs> we talk about him. Well, but he's that, that's him, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he's just so damaging. And yep. You can imagine that teams are going to, you know, remember what Sando said and uh, start sitting on him a yeah. little bit. Uh, and in that sense, it's a real shame that we don't have seed. But Yeah, uh, but I think that McKay and, well, not so much Laird, but I think McKay has really pulled the weight on that halfback yeah, line and Miller before he was injured as well. So I think that... Smithers, if he does get sat on a little bit, we've got a few other options that can hopefully step up. I would have been a bit more comfortable with Miller, obviously. Yeah. Um, but D Max form, you can't fold him. No, 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 you absolutely not. Like he was good again yeah. on the weekend. Yeah. Um, so if he just keeps doing that, just keep doing it, D Max. Just <laughs> keep doing it, please. Yeah. Um, at, I <clears> think <throat> this is going to be the game. Remember, I, I spoke, I think last week about Atkins not showing up in tight contests. Mm. I think this is going to be the game for Rory to really show us whether he's going to be involved or not involved. I don't think he was bad on the weekend. No, no, no. I thought he was good, but it was when we was flowing our way. That's right. Yeah, and again, but we already know that's what we get out of Rat. I don't know why. I, I get that he needs defensive work and rah, rah, rah. No, no, no. I think you're misunderstanding me. I think, as I said last week, I don't mind him being on the outside. Yeah. And, you know, tackles, yeah, okay, but... What I want is for him to still get his 25 touches yep. in a tight contest yeah. rather than doing lane work down the outer wing. Missing. <clears throat> so yep. I think this is going to be a, a harder, tighter affair for longer. Yep. Um, and Rory needs to be, put himself in good positions uh, and be prepared to work in tighter situations rather than just wait for the open ball, the easy run, that yeah. sort of stuff. So Rory really needs to um, continue his good form because he has been playing well. He's been playing all right, yeah. Um, and do and do it under probably the most pressure so far he's going to have, I think, yeah, so well, far this season. If the, the match-up on the paper, which it often isn't, but if it is right, he's probably going to line up on either Langdon or Brad Hill. Yeah. And Brad Hill's got wheels and he's very damaging. It's probably yeah. one that we haven't talked about and probably deserves to be talked about. And then you've got Langdon on the other wing, who's no slouch either. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. I wouldn't actually mind, I wouldn't actually be surprised, sorry, if we saw Riley Knight on Brad Hill um, as a bit of a shutdown role on the wing there. But yeah, they're going to have their work cut out and Rat definitely needs to step up yep. and make sure that he doesn't let either let Brad off the chain, but then also gets his 25 Get, touches. Gets like his own said. ball, yeah, yeah and distributes. Uh, because... When he can get clear space and distribute the ball, both him and uh, D Mac and Smithers yep. and, and those blokes, yeah, they're really damaging. Yep. You know, techs on the end of those, and we look a, we look a million bucks when that's happening yeah, as well. Exactly. Yep. So you know, I think overall, I think we've got the inside grunt to be able to get first use. Yep. What I worry about, I guess, is whether it's going to turn into a hat kick out of the contest 
or whether we're going to be able to get clear spread out of those congested uh, situations yeah. so that we can actually move the ball meaningfully rather than just hack it forward and watch it come back over our heads. And see, you know, years gone by, Freer would have been all about just the hack, kick, forward, hack, kick, yeah. forward, and they would have done nothing about it because that's exactly how they would have played. But yeah. they've evolved a little bit. They've got a lot of good users on the outside now, and then their ball movement is completely different in the fact that they actually run forward. Yeah, they actually they play they football. They spread. Not rugby. <laughs> they spread, they try and hit up, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's going to be important. Yeah, uh, and to that end, I think uh, also this is just another test for Riley O'Brien. Uh, mm. Rory Lobb is uh, a quality player, you know. I mean, he's yep. not probably he's probably more suited to a forward role, yep. in my opinion. But he's no slouch in the ruck, and he's no. tall, and he gets around the ground. Yeah, he's quite um, mobile. I think Riley O'Brien has surprised a few people. Um, in yeah. not so much in terms of his ruck work, but in terms of his aggression mm. in second and third well, efforts, he's, he's got to bring something. Yeah, well, he does. It's, yeah. You yeah. know, he's a little bit undersized. He seems to get pushed off a little bit, um, and his skills are something to left to be desired as well yeah. at times. Yeah. Um, so I guess his only option then is to just ma- be want a it, Yeah, want it more than anyone else on yeah. the field. So well, he's been doing that. Yeah, and you've got to give him credit where it's due. He has. And there's yeah. been times where he does that thing where he pushes the ruckman out and gets the clearance himself. I'm a big fan of when he does that. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see how he goes against Rory because Rory's a bit of a lighter frame. Yeah, he's taller, yeah. Yeah. but he's nowhere near as a bigger body as what... Yeah. Um, well, Rory Lobb is. tends to do a lot of this. Yeah. He uses that wingspan yeah, to yep. give himself space. Whereas if Riley gets in underneath him a bit and sort of yeah. uses his body to get him out, it might find that he gets a few more hit outs this week, yeah. which would be good. Yeah. So, mate, you're Rossi Lyon. Mm. You're uh, in the coach's box for the first 10 and then you come down to the bench. Yeah. How, how are you winning this game? Well, we sort of already touched on it. Obviously, their big bodies in Fife and Mundy are going to be vital at centre bounces. They're going to want to get the ball out to their ball users like Walters, Bradley Hill, those types, and they're going to want to take advantage of their full forward line. So you've got Hogan and Tabernard down there. Yep. They want the ball coming in quick, coming in high, nothing at the boots or anything like that. They want a good yep. delivery. And I think that if they can play our game a little bit against us and play the territory battle and keep it away from our forward line and away from our mids, that'll go a long way for them to win because I think that if it switches and it goes onto the other terms, we're going to struggle a little bit. Yeah. So I'm Donny Pike and yeah. I've had a look and it's 10 minutes in and I've run down. <laughs> for us, <laughs> for us, I really think it's all about the cold face. I think we need yeah. to get first use. Yep. Uh, if we can get enough use, uh, I think we'll win. Yep. I think we've got enough firepower up forward uh, and I think their defence is their weakest area. So yeah, I agree. I think if we can get enough first use of the ball uh, and in a creative sense, if, if we're doing that hat kick, it's going to be a slog. But yep. if we can spread nicely and, and use the ball properly, um, I think uh, I think we'll, we'll have enough of the ball to, to kick a winning score. If, it, if we get bogged down then it's going to be a struggle because yeah. I think that they've got a lot of options up forward. Yep. So do we. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but I think it'll make it a lot harder. It'll uh, be a closer across, game. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so. Uh, but if we can get some run and carry going, get first use out of the contest, use text, use easy, um, you know, Betts gets on the end of a few, Lockie yeah. Murphy puts in his effort and all the rest of it, I think, I think we'll win. Yeah, I think you're right because quick ball movement has always been the catalyst for Crows. It's brand Crows, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So... Um, when we're moving the ball quickly, when we're getting in quick to the forwards, that's when we play well. Um, and obviously that spring off halfback is always vital. So 100% agree with you what you said there. Yeah. And it's interesting that coaches now, or opposition coaches now, are talking about stopping the Crows from playing yeah. how the Crows play. Yeah, the, the, the talk has switched a little bit from like, are the Crows going to rock up to, we need to stop Brody Smith, we need to stop their run off halfback, yep. that sort of stuff, which is good. Yeah. And even like Tech's being talked about now as well. He's getting a bit of, after all that negative over the last, 18 months yeah. he's starting to get a bit of kudos as well and people yeah. are noticing he's in good form well you know it's it's amazing to watch Tex when he's in form because oh, yeah. it's it's so different mm. like you know we, we spent the first three or four weeks watching him struggle two on one ball out wide uh, hardly taking a contested yeah. mark not having any space to lead into and all the rest of it yeah. then Gold Coast and St Kilda all of a sudden we actually play to our strengths and play to his strengths. I was going to say, and it's a bit off topic, do you think we've been playing Tex out of position this, this whole time? I, I've always thought that we should be playing Tex. Because there. he's a good facilitator, I get that. But 
I feel like he has been far more damaging the last two weeks closer to goal than he's ever been further out from goal. I know he's a beautiful field kick. I get all that. He can still do that from full forward. Yeah. He can still, you know, well, lead up. Well, he still up. gets out. To yeah, because he, he still does. And he can still wheel around and be that link yeah. in. But when we've already got Lynch out there, we don't need him to be out there. Well, when you mentioned Lynch, and I think the knock-on effect from playing Tex deeper Lynch is has got more space. Lynch has got more space. He's yep. actually getting more ball. Yep. He's just got to work on his disposal and probably his decision-making. And yep. I reckon he's kicked one end of the mark every week, <laughs> like does, I predicted. He does it every week, Oh, though. my God, every week. Um, but it has brought Tom back into the game. Yep. Agreed. Um, you know, so Tex can hit hit up on those leads. I think uh, Himmelberg is smart enough to be able to come in behind yep. and fill that space yep. uh, for the bailout kick over the top. So it works really well, and I, I love watching Tex when he's in form. You yeah. know, and uh, I must admit, I was one of those people that thought he might have been close to the end. Nah, but as it turns out, never bought into that chat. To no, be I didn't. I oh, know you didn't. No, I um, never did. It, well, as it turns out, I think we're playing better. To our structures. Yep. So, mate, I reckon it's going to be one of the best games of the season so far for the Crows. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's going to be an entertaining match. Yep. It's such a pity it's a bloody four on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, at least it's at home though. Yep. yep. And uh, the one, well, not the one thing, but one of the things in our favour is that Frio just, it doesn't matter how we're going, Frio just can't handle it over here. No, nah, they seem to struggle. Um, and even when we go over there, we've got a pretty decent record against yep. them as well. So... Yeah, I think that if we do the things that we've already mentioned, we should win. Yeah. Uh, goals? Uh, I'm going to say conservatively 18 points, but again, wouldn't be surprised if we won by more. Yeah, I actually think we're going... I think we're going all right. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> as much as I was pessimistic last week... Yeah, yeah I know. You're not about to I tip know. the Crows, are you? Oh, yeah. I would tip the Crows by oh about six goals, Lord, I think. Lord, how my days? About six goals. Wow. Uh, yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thanks very much for joining us uh it's going to be a great game uh, i hope you're all revved up ready for the match this afternoon don't forget uh because of the late afternoon start the rap mm. show won't be starting until eight o'clock this evening you'll be tuning in i'm sure no probably not right <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday i've got better oh. things to do oh yeah it's your birthday bloody yeah. hell. um so join us for the rap at uh, 8 p.m on spreaker facebook or later on on youtube um, and then get around us again on Tuesday night for Tuesday Night Live. I think we're going to have a player interview this week. So Ooh, we haven't, do we know? Well, we I don't know. We, we actually, no, because we actually had a, a coach lined up for last week, and then I had to can it because I had to work. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we can line just that quit up. Your job. Um, yeah, just quit my job. Yeah, just quit uh, your yeah, job. Well, keep, you know, if yeah. you want me to quit my job. <laughs> Uh, thanks to everyone for their support. Uh, thank you to Ryan uh, at Smith Partners Real Estate. Thank you to our patrons on Patreon. If you want to support us on Patreon, uh, just go to patreon.com forward slash AFL Crowcast or click the Patreon button on our website at aflcrowcast.com. That's it. Cool. Thanks, mate. No. Come on. Happy birthday. <laughs> <Joking>. <laughs>